friends and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Laura. Today I am out in the forest. I'm collecting some of the fall things that have started to become ripe in the forest and I thought I would take you along for uh, a bit of a wild foraging harvest. And before I actually get started with the actual harvesting, with, which I'm already at, I'm already at my first um, item. But before that, I'm going to show you what you need. Oh gosh, the sun is coming out. What you need if you're going to be foraging in the forest. If it's going to be sunny, ugh, you need some sunglasses. Things number two, three, four, five, and six. So I've got a bucket because I plan on harvesting some river clay. Um, that's just a explosion thing to scare birds away. Don't worry about it. Uh, I brought a hat to keep myself safe from the sun. I brought a glass jar because you never know what thing you could find. Sometimes there's a butterfly or something out here that is dead that I can collect. I brought plastic gloves in case there is something that will stain my hands. I also brought, oh, a basket, of course. I plan on getting some black walnuts. I brought um, good hard gloves for if there's something pokey. And I brought two garbage bags just in case I find any garbage bag, any garbage things like beer bottles or stuff like that. But for now, I'm gonna get started with this bush right here, which is a rose bush and the rose hips look beautiful on it. This year's rose hips look awesome. So I'm just gonna set the camera down ooh, and collect some rose hips. These forests ugh, that I'm wandering around are pretty much edged with uh, rose bushes, huge, huge rose bushes, uh, wild roses, and they are all packed full of these rose hips right now. So we haven't had a frost yet, so they won't be at their sweetest, but they'll still have all of the vitamin C and all of the other stuff. So I am going to probably be making rose hip jelly, I think. Either way, let's keep moving. And here we've made it to our second stop. This is a black walnut tree. And I'm just gonna collect a couple of black walnuts from here. They are, again, all, all in, in this forest. If you can see this tree, all these trees pretty much are all black walnut. So this little guy here has a few walnuts that I can reach. So these are gonna be the ones I grab. Okay, so black walnuts are one of those ones you wanna wear gloves for. They stink. They smell like spoiled um, citrus fruit. Like if you've ever had an orange go bad in your fridge, that's what these guys smell like. So I am gonna use a glove for picking them. And I'll just grab probably five or six from each tree that I go to. Uh, and eventually I'll fill up my bag. These are just little ones, but they still have all of the great pigment in them, so we're going to be using those to color some wool later. Ooh, we found a jackpot. A little bonus. And that is in these goldenrod. I'll just grab a couple of them. That will be for natural dye too. I'll leave one in the patch, but this area is just surrounded by them. So I will pick up a few of those and then we'll be using them for a dye bath. They make such a beautiful color. I found where the deer are sleeping. Look at this. There was a deer sleeping here. There was probably a deer there. One over there. Nice cozy spot. These ones aren't quite ready. Still just a little too yellow. Maybe a week or two. 
I found my first little bit of human trash. Much better. One of my favorite things about the forest. Moss. Ooh, look, a mushroom. Also, check out this wound. I hammered my finger. Ouch. Anyway, check out this mushroom. I don't think it's going to benefit me for dying because it's um, quite old already, but still kind of cool. Look at that web. Okay, so I made it now to the area that I actually was like aiming to go to today in the forest, and that is the dried up riverbed. That's what's behind me here. This is all in the spring. It's all full of mud and water sometimes. Right now it's all dried up, which means exposed is some really nice clay. And since I have a video coming up soon where I'm going to be refining clay, I want to get some really nice quality, fine grit, really clean clay, which is what you can get from a riverbed. And I'm going to compare it to what, um, what I can get just from my backyard. So this is pretty, pretty clean clay already. And since it's dry, it's so easy to get the rocks out. So I'm just going to scrape a little bit of that, probably a couple of cups of it. Um, from the edge of this little dried river area um, into my bucket. So let's do that. go. So this is just really, really clean clay. We'll just have to do a little sift through for twigs and stuff, but there's almost no grit at all in here. Look at how smooth it is just by crushing it. Oh, it's going to be so easy to turn this into clay to make pots with, but we're still collecting stuff out in the forest. So, so far we've got some goldenrod. That's about enough for one dye bath. So pretty. We've also got some rose hips. We've got some clay. We've got a couple of black walnuts down there. And we've got our garbage bag. So let's see if there's anything else that we can find around here. Look, I found some wild snapdragons. Isn't it cute? You want to know something cool about these snapdragons? If you turn them over, they look like Goofy. Doesn't that look like Goofy? I always thought that was so cool. Either that or at least it looks like a dog. Oops. The forest is also a cool spot to find totally dry. Ugh rotten wood if you need dry rotten wood for an art project. Look at this lichen. Isn't it pretty? It's all over this dead tree. It's so delicate. Just back here too are wild grapes. 
They're no good to eat, but pretty. More rose hips that are not ready. I'm sure we'll find more. So the mountain that I live on and the forest that I frequent is on a the edge of a lake basically a mountain on the edge of a lake and there are all of these fossils isn't that the weirdest looking every time I see it I'm like it looks like a screw in concrete but it's not it's some some kind of tube worm fossil from millions of years ago isn't that neat super cool and you can hear the cicadas in the background Yeah, pretty much every one of the rocks you pick up has fossils in it. Isn't that cool? Anyway. So I just stopped to pick up this, this piece of plastic hose to take in the garbage. And I saw these! Look how pretty! There we go. For those of you who live where black walnuts grow, did you ever find these when you were growing up? We always called these pig's noses because, well, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory, but they're just half of a walnut. Neat, eh? Anyway. I knew we would find more ripe ones. More rose hips. So pretty. Now, do they smell? No. Darn, I was hoping they were wild chamomile. Just wild daisies. Still pretty though. I think I'll grab a little handful. To bring home to Alex. Cute. Lots of them around. Holy moly. Wow. I've never actually seen one of those functioning. I always find them in the winter when everybody's home. Look at that. It's a large drive. I really wouldn't want to screw with that one. I hear you. Yikes. We have an escaped forest chicken. Let's see. Hi, Diane! Okay, so I'm back inside now, finished with the forest excursion that I took a little earlier in the day. Um, I've cooled down, I've changed my sweater. Unfortunately, my other one got all covered in pokey burrs, so continuity error. But we're gonna go through what I found in the forest. I have to do a little bit of cutting for my flowers so that they don't get all wilted. They kind already are a little bit wilted, but that's okay. Um, but I'm going to start with that just because that's an easy, <laughs> that's the easiest one. I did find an awful lot of garbage in the forest, so I was kind of disappointed with how much human plastic was in there. I found a broken beer bottle, a bunch of styrofoam, bless you CJ, and um, yeah, just random plastic things. So that was a bummer. But we got a whole garbage bag full, so at least at least there's less in there now. All right. Urgh. All right. Well, that's a little bit full, but now we've got 
a vase full of daisies. I'll bring that down to Alex. First, let's separate everything else. So I've got goldenrod. I'm going to be doing a dye bath with goldenrod soon. So I just collected it. Um, the interesting thing, one interesting thing about goldenrod is when you're dyeing with it, you want to dye with it when it's like not open all the way like this. Um, once it's open all the way, you lose some of that bright, bright, like almost citrine, like bright yellow um, once they're open, once the flowers are open. So you pick them just a little bit early. And don't worry, there's like <laughs> millions of goldenrod plants around here. I'm not even making a dent. Um, but yeah, it makes a really bright yellow if you pick them in advance of them being ready. Um, okay, also... I found one snail and I also found a little piece of a uh, deer antler. So I took that home. I will put that in bleach to like get it bright white. The snail shell, I thought I was going to find a whole bunch more and I was going to give them to the chickens, but I only found the one. So it's just a snail in a jar. So there's my goldenrod. That doesn't really need any processing. I'll just leave it outside overnight so that the um, bugs have a chance to leave because there are no doubt a few terrifying creatures in there. Okay, next I have some uh, black walnuts. I'm gonna use these as a mordant. I'm not gonna use them for dye. I'm going to pre-mordant my yarn by using the tannin in here. Then I'm going to dye it yellow with the goldenrod. I think that might do something. So I wanna do that. Uh, and next I've got my rose hips, which I can actually do a little bit of processing while we chat. Um, I just picked the ones that I could find that were ripe. Some of them were still yellow, so I didn't bother with those ones. Uh, but these ones that are bright orange and bright red, I picked a few. And I'm going to do a preserve batch of rose hip jelly. I've never made anything before, but this year I made some wild black raspberry jelly with my mom and uh, I picked all the berries for it so now I'm all like excited to try to do it myself but first I have to get all the bits off of my rose hips I guess that can be part of another video but ouch too where I show how to do that stay tuned for that because I already got the rose hips so I'll probably show you the recipe I used all right, I'm gonna just move on to the next part because this is not a rose hip jelly video. This is a look what I found in the forest video. Okay, so I'll do that later, but rose hips, got a lot of them. Urgh! And then this was the really exciting thing for me. Um, I collected some river bed clay, which is like this really nice quality clay that's got almost no sand in it. It's just, oh already powder it's just so easy to work with so uh, I got some of that I'm gonna see if it's better or worse than the clay that I can get out of the dirt in my backyard I thought that would be a fun little experiment to do a couple of different clay um, types like I'll get some dirt from my parents yard I'll get some dirt from our yard and then I'll get dirt this dirt from the forest lake bed river bed and um, we'll see what happens I also collected some rocks because I'm a 12 year old boy scout apparently. Um, I always collect rocks, but I think this one's a fossil. I think I found a fossil here because it's kind of shaped like a bone or something, but it's made of rock. So I think I found a fossil. Probably I found quite a few fossils because the entire um, escarpment is fossils okay so that's all that's th that I had to do for the clay was separate it from the rocks that I collected now what I'm going to do to the clay but this is going to be part of the clay video so stay tuned again for that I'm going to sift out all of the bits of grass and any rocks that actually did make it into the clay and then from there it'll be on to water processing so sift out the bits soak it overnight to get it all absorbing all the liquid the clay like suspends in water and then sift off the clay in the morning blah 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 moving forward you'll hear all about those instructions in the next video but this is what I found in the forest I found some beautiful flowers I found dye bath materials I found a source of tannin 
some cool dead things, which is kind of one of my favorite things. Oh, my pa pa plate's over there. I have a plate of dead things. Anyway, I found some rocks, found some good fruit type things for a preserve I'm gonna do, and, and I had a good time. So I hope you enjoyed walking around through the forest with me, and um, if you did, let me know. If you wanna see other things uh, that I have in the forest or whatnot, let me know in the comments. And um, if you want to see how to make clay, how or like clay to make pots from clay in the garden, uh, how to make rosehip jelly, and how to dye your fabric or yarn with goldenrod, um, come back in a little while, and I'll have those videos coming out soon. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good time. I hope you'll subscribe because uh, it's a great community and there's a lot of great people in it. So. I hope you'll join us and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.